This conference will now be recorded. So in today's session, we will continue with the creation of stock items with the implementation of the GST details. And then we will proceed with the creation of inventory-based vouchers. So let's continue the session with the creation of stock items. So please log into your companies. Tally. Yes. Now in the previous uh, session, we had done the stock item creations until uh, perhaps Dell computers. So we had done for Logitech printers, Vivo mobiles, Agile pens, Camphor and Dell computers. So we'll continue and we will finish the stock item creation for the ledger books, petrol and boat. Okay. So I hope all of you are ready and let's begin with the stock item creations. So first we have here is ledger books. The GST rate applicable for ledger books is 12%. So we go to the tally screen here. So here we have create option. Inventory masters, we have stock item. And here we will create the stock item of ledger books. Now it will come under the store group of notebooks. Category it will be stationary. And units, units, of course, we also have dozens as well as we have uh, numbers. So it is preferably numbers. Why? Because in case if exactly like one dozen, two dozens, three dozens, in terms of dozens, the notebooks are being purchased, then we can easily select dozens. But in case, if like 50 numbers, 60 numbers, uh, you know, 80 numbers, in such case, if 80 pieces of notebooks, so that it, since it may not equate exactly to a dozen, okay, or multiples of it, we can go for numbers or uh, pieces. So here you can choose numbers for ledger books. Now GST is yes, applicable. Set or alter GST, we'll give it as yes. So description, you can give it as ledger books. Only because I've not given here like classmate, Vidya notebooks or something like that. I've just given as ledger books. If you want, you can give in the stock item uh, name. So give the uh, HSN code. So in the previous class, we saw the HSN code for various uh, stock items, yes. So like that only we'll create. Yes. So we'll just take out the HSN code for notebooks right so here you can watch out the hsn code for notebooks is 482010 if you want completely yes yeah, so here we get right? so now here we're talking about the ledger books or notebooks right so the first part only we can take where we have 4820 in case much in detail, like register account books, notebooks, order books, receipt books, it is 482010. So in short, we can take it as 482010 as the HSN code. So give the HSN as 4820. Non-GST goods, it is no. Calculation type, it is on value. And uh, taxability, you have to choose taxable. Integrated tax will give it as 12%. The GST rate applicable is 12%. The type of supply, we have goods. Rate of duty, it's nil. And we are not giving any opening balance for any of the stock items, which we are going to create, okay? So accept, yes. Now, 
The next one we have is petrol. So petrol is very, very important here to be discussed. Now, petrol is completely a non-GST, right? It is not like it is uh, exempt, it is nil rated. It's nothing of such. It is non-GST, which means petrol stands outside the ambit of GST. It doesn't find place in the uh, GST tariff or the rates of GST. So henceforth, it is non-GST. Uh, good. So what we have to do is we have to create the stock item as petrol under liquid fuel and we have fuel as stock category. So petrol is liter. Either of them you can take either liter or liter of 1000 milliliters. Now here you have to be very careful. GST applicable. So you have to give here itself as not applicable. You have not carry out on the GST details because they don't find a place in the tariff, as I've told you, it is a non-GST commodity. So what you have to do is press the space bar and select not applicable. Okay, so, so, so since it stands outside the ambit, it is GST is not applicable. Okay. So rate of duty again nil. So once you give GST is not applicable, so what happens is uh, automatically set or alter GST details, type of supply, all these features will not be activated or highlighted. Okay. So again, opening balances nil. Okay, so the last one we have gold. Now gold, if you have taken as precious metal, like our stock category is metal and stock group, you can take it as uh, precious metal. Anyhow, you can give. Otherwise, it, it is also subject to the fueling. So you can take it as solid fuel. So anyhow, it can be taken. So if I take it as gold, in case if I, if I want to give under solid fuel, works. Otherwise, it can also be given as precious metal. Anything is fine. Anything is fine. Should the quantities of the items be added? I've given it here as yes. Category, I'll give it as metal. Units, I'll, here I'm giving as grams. GST applicable. Set or alter GST, yes. And description, precious metal can be given. Now, what is the Hutchison code for gold? Let's find out. So as you can make out here, you have in gold, we have variant uh, categories. So you take it as seven, one, one, three. Now you again have gold unstudded, gold set with pearls, gold set with diamonds, gold set with precious and semi-precious stones, any articles of gold, articles flagged with gold. So one uh, commodity or one item you take, you have so many variants. So what you have to do is you, you can you can say you can go for uh, seven one one three as the Hutchison code. On value taxable, it is three percent. The GST rate on gold is three percent. So CGST SGST is. 1.5%, 1.5%. Type of supply goods. No opening balance. So I hope all of you have done this. Please make sure you have completed the creation of stock items. So we have totally eight. Right. So after the stock item creation, next we begin with the set of vouchers. 
Now, in the previous session, we went for the stock groups creation, then we had stock category creation, then we had units of measure, we had location. Now, after finishing all this, uh, you know, background preparations, now we will begin with the inventory based vouchers. That is, first one we have is purchase voucher. Now, purchase voucher. What, what is the function key for a purchase voucher? It is F9. So what is the function key for a payment voucher? What is the function key for a payment? It is F5. The function key for receipt voucher is F6, F7 for journal, and F9 for a purchase voucher. Now the first we talk about is the intrastate supply under GST. Right? So, what do we mean by intrastate supply? So, here it's a transaction where the location of the supplier and place of supply are the same. In intrastate transactions, a seller has to collect both CGST and SGST from the buyer. And in case, if at all, GST would be applicable. So, what variant or what component of GST would be reflected? In the bill or the invoice, it is CGST and SGST. So the CGST gets deposited with the central government. SGST gets deposited with the state government. So we also would have experienced evidence, to, right? Whenever we are purchasing any commodity or availing any services and we receive the bill. So when we receive the bill, after the uh, total uh, uh, value, we believe that we have the taxes applicable and they what do we see? We see CGST 5%, SGST 5%, or CGST 6%, SGST 6%. So like this, we see the division of taxes of GST between central and the states in the invoice itself. So, and most important, intrastate is where the location of supplier and place of supply are the same. Now, if let's assume if I am running a provisional store, Okay, I'm falling short of uh, rice bags, so I need to place an order and purchase the same. Now, my business is in Bangalore, so situated in Karnataka. Now, I place an order for 25 rice bags from, a, from my regular supplier. Let's say who's in uh, Dharwad, okay? So what happens is Bangalore is also within the state of Karnataka. So Bangalore becomes the place of supply. Yes, he's supplying to Bangalore. Now I place an order to purchase from my supplier who's in Dharwad. So what happens is location of the supplier is Dharwad. Now Dharwad is within the state of Karnataka. So what happens is it is intrastate supply where location of the supplier and the place of supply are the same. It's like Mumbai and Pune. If you take, suppose if I take off Maharashtra's example, like that. So where both belong to the same state, where the transaction takes place within the state, they're all my in intrastate supplies. Now, if at all tax as I told, which tax is applicable? It is CGST and SGST. So we see the equal division of taxes between center and the states where the CGST tax revenue gets deposited with the central and SGST gets deposited with the state government. Yes, so here we have certain uh, illustrations. First of all, we have purchased 100 liters of petrol from HP Petrol Bank, Jayanagar, at rupees 100 by cash. The second entry I've given here is purchased 100 units of Dell computers at 10,000 per unit from Sriram Traders, Karnataka. The last one is company purchased 100 numbers of retro books at 45, 10 packets of agile pens at 100 from Swati Enterprises with 3% discount. Now, the discount activation is done only for the third entry, not for the first two. The first two are without the discount. So what is the first transaction here is company has purchased 100 liters of petrol from HP Petrol Bank 
this bank is situated in Jayanagar. So moment I say Jayanagar, Bangalore and Karnataka, right? Now where my company is situated within Karnataka. So it is an intrastate inward supply. So whenever we talk about intrastate supplies uh, for purchases, we, com we completely define it as intrastate inward supply because the stocks are being received or services are being received. So it is an intrastate inward supply. So let's pass the same voucher in the tally also. Right, so press escape key and we'll, move, we'll go to the gateway of tally screen and here are the vouchers. Right, so we have purchase voucher F9. Now, before beginning with the uh, purchase voucher for this, now here, if, if you can observe how the format appears, we have the supplier invoice number, the date, party account, then we have the purchase ledger and name of the item, quantity, rate, and amount. So there is no question of debit and credit aspect appearing here. The screen is completely different here. So we don't have that debit aspect and credit aspect, right? Now, before I begin uh, the purchase voucher, I want to ensure that all of you are getting uh, the same screen or are you just getting particulars, rate and amount. Please ensure that you're getting name of the item, quantity, rate and amount for Okay, so now before we begin passing I first. Yes. Please repeat your uh, question. I just have particulars. You have particulars, rate and amount. You don't have name of the item. Okay. So what you have to do is you have to press Control H. On the vertical button bar, you have an option as change mode option, right? If you can watch on the vertical button bar. Yes, this is the one. So just click on that. And you have three modes here. You have item invoice, you have accounting invoice, and you have as voucher. So what you have to choose is, you have to choose item invoice, the first one. Choose the first one and press enter. Now are you able to get name of the item, quantity, rate and amount? I think I, 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 I hope you've got it. Now, so let's continue. So before we start, first what all of us have to do is, we have to ensure whether a few features, you know, in the configuration are set right. So what we have to do is first press F12 configuration, press F12 configuration. Now here, uh, if you come to the right uh, side, you have the GST details screen, right? So there, press enter and arrive at the GST details screen. Now the first option we have, modify tax rate details of GST. In case if it is no, please activate it as yes. Under GST details, you have modify tax rate details. In case if this option is not appearing, okay, so the clarification for this would be that you have not active, uh, activated the GST classification in the company features. Now, all of you are able to get this, modify tax rate details of GST. Okay. So once you activate this, press enter and close the calculation. Now here, now we have two dates here. One we have date on the right hand side showing as 1st of April or 2nd of April 21. On the left hand side also we have a date next to the supplier invoice number. Now, which, which is the date we have to enter? And the most important, what is the difference between these two dates? Now the date which is appearing on the right hand side of your screen is the voucher entry date. Now as of not be showing as 1st of April Thursday or 2nd of April Friday, right? 
so that's the voucher entry date and the date which is appearing uh, uh, next to the supplier invoice number that is the date of purchase now in case let's uh, assume that the goods have been purchased but purchased goods on 29th august okay so this was date purchase goods on 29th of august and recorded or entry made 30th august so this is how it comes so in case if the company has purchased goods on 29th of august that 29th this date this 29th will appear here okay in this uh, date field next to supplier invoice number now the next date what i have given entry may 30th of august this 30th of august will be reflected here where it is showing as 1st of april th thursday so the date on which the entry will be recorded the entry is passed that is a voucher entry date the date on which the goods have been purchased the date of purchase will be recorded over here on the left hand side next to the supplier invoice number so this is the difference between the voucher entry date and the purchase date as of now uh date you cannot make any changes because as i've told you in all these sessions that the date appears by default or a maximum you can change it to first second or 31st of any month in between dates you can't give so let's not worry about the dates now we have here supplier invoice number now you would have also observed it whenever you have made a purchase of any groceries of any dress material or anything it can be every bill every invoice will have a number right so that number has to be given over here that's nothing but supplier invoice number so that number has to be given here typed here now as of now you can give as 001 for the practice now date will be resumed automatically as i've told then press enter now here we have the party account name company has purchased petrol of 100 liters from hp petrol bank which is in jayanagar should be my party the company's uh, supplier's ledger party ledger has to be hp petrol bank so please create the same select the create option at the top then now since petrol is being purchased right so hp petrol bank is created under which group it is created under the group of sundry printers maintain balances bill by bill yes no other change now you would have had a thought since i have given as hp petrol bank jayanagar should i activate the cost centers or should i deactivate it it doesn't matter in case you have when the whether you activate don't activate cost centers the main uh, point or the main part is the state which will be given so more than jayanagar now in which state the transaction is taking place karnataka right so that matters the most if you activate cost centers no harm it will not affect the transaction if not you can just leave it as it is now please come to the right hand side and here you can give the gst registration number of hp petrol bank so registration type you can give it as regular rather leave it as regular now here you can give the gst in number so uh, as i told in the previous session gst in stands for goods and service tax identification number which is a 15 digit alpha numeric character now you can give it for this for hp petrol bank also so 29 is the state code followed by five alphabets 
four number four numbers an alphabet and this is how the combination runs so it will come as uh, invalid only because we're just entering it for a sake of practice but here we have to give the real gst now here set an alter gst you have to activate it as yes so here no changes are required to be made just press enter and come back to the party ledger creation screen accept yes these receipt details uh, i will be teaching you in the next uh, workshop okay where we can view a very important document in tally okay so now as of now you just press enter need not enter anything over here here also if you wish you can give the address in janaga where does it come for example enter yes now here what you have to do is you have to create a new ledger now we are not going to create any party ledger here we have to create a separate ledger to account for all the purchases made right in tally with gst so what you have to do is select create option select the create option which is appearing in the list of ledger accounts press enter now here you have to create a ledger as purchase account purchase account would be reflected under the group of purchase account type of ledger not applicable cost center please make sure it is deactivated now here is gst applicable set the alter gst don't give it as yes because we are not setting the gst rate details only for one commodity we are setting the gst uh, rate details for more than one commodity so hence for set the alter gst details will be no only type of supply of positives goods as of now there nothing else to update here enter so please make sure you have created the purchase account ledger so once you are done you can accept the ledger save the ledger so all of you are able to get the screen tax classification details once you create the ledger of purchase account so once you get yes, this tax classification okay good so once you get this tax classification details the next job is what all of us have to do is press space bar yes so here you get a big list of gst classification right now which to select which not to select which is the uh, optimum selection for each and every voucher all this is required to be known here now i will give you a simple statement an equation rather before we select it here if we are making a purchase within the state that is intra state purchase 
if it is intra intra means within the state the classification would be purchase taxable okay so if it is intra state within the state purchase so what gst classification you have to choose as purchase taxable in case if it is interstate purchase next which we would see if it is interstate purchase the classification would be interstate purchase taxable so please make a note of the same so if it is interstate within the state purchase what classification you have to choose is purchase taxable if it is interstate purchase that is between the states between two or more states the classification to be chosen is interstate purchase tax okay so now as of now we are treating an intra state inward supply so intra state purchase we are dealing right now so we have to select which type of classification or which type of nature the last one that's purchase tax which is appearing at the last so select purchase taxable press enter yes like this now before we resume the entry now here if we come back to the entry this have shown you in case if we go for it within the state and between the states how we have to choose the classification now if we come back to the entry and cross check now what do we have here we have here purchased 100 liters of petrol now as i've told you petrol is non gst yes so petrol stands outside the ambit of gst now in case if it is non gst what has to be chosen what could be the consequence for petrol only for petrol for the others or it is taxable now here how i have explained you that in case if you are going for a intra state purchase a taxable one you are choosing purchase tax now if i talk about a petrol uh, commodity now it is no, non gst now this how can it affect in a gst classification press enter on purchase account and you are going back to the tax classification details now here for petrol what we have to do is press the space bar now please cross check nowhere we are having as non gst classification we are just having exempt here purchase exempt but as i told it doesn't find place in the tariff 2 right so we can't take it as exempt so what has to done what has to be done now we have to choose here what any answers shall we choose purchase bill rated or purchase exempt what could be your answer the nature of transaction has to be not applicable why because it is non gst petrol is so you have to choose not applicable in case if it is within the state as i've shown you already it is purchase taxable between the state it is interstate purchase taxable non gst it will be not applicable so select not applicable and come back to the purchase voucher creation screen now here select petrol in the list of stock items once you select petrol the location screen will be automatically highlighted item allocation screen now so, so select the location now 100 liters of petrol can be stored at the office space right there be a store room warehouse or the go down where all the stocks would be kept yes so we will select the location here so i will choose your location 1 now what is the quantity which has been purchased it is 100 liters so type 100 press enter 
Now the rate is 100 per meter. So totally we have 10,000 as the gross amount. Press enter, enter. Right. Now, since it does not fall within the ambit of GST, there is no question of uh, levying CGST and SGST or calculating the same. So what we will do is just press enter and we will come to the amount column at the bottom. Once you come to the amount column at the bottom, press enter. Right, now here you have four types of adjustments. You have advance, you have against, you have new reference, and you have on account. Now what does this transaction say? Purchase 100 liters of petrol from HP Petrol Bank at rupees 100 per liter by cash. So which type of adjustment should I choose here? Is it new? Again? On account. Very good. It is on account. So you have to choose on account because spot payment is made. The company has purchased and makes the payment immediately. So you have to choose on account. So let's go for it. So choose on account. So 10,000 will be automatically highlighted in the amount column. Press enter. Enter. Yes, so you'll come to the narration. So being purchase of petrol made, otherwise being petrol purchased and payment made immediately. So narration would be being petrol purchased and payment made immediately. This is how the narration can be given. If you want to get still more details, you're free to do that in the narration column. Once you type the narration, pass the entry. Pass the word purchase voucher. Yes. Now, once we have passed the purchase voucher for the purchase of petrol, now HP Petrol Bank has to be paid by the company. So, can we stop only at the purchase voucher, even though we would have given on account, but a transaction is brought to a complete end or a proper ending only with the payment or receipt vouchers? Yes. So where we are officially, we are, we are settling the transaction or closing the pending bills. So what we have to do is, after every purchase voucher, uh, you have to pass a payment voucher. Similarly, after every sales voucher, please pass a receipt voucher. So make sure you don't forget that. Now what we will do is, we will go for the payment voucher, press F5. So you get the payment voucher. Now, payment of 10,000 is to be made to HP Petrol Bank, where cash or bank would be going out. The funds are going out. So debit is what? The expense ledger. I hope all of you remember your uh, syntax of payment vouchers. Debit is expense ledger, credit is cash or bank. So, so, so to whom the amount has to be paid here? Either expense ledger, it can be or the party ledger. So it is HP Petrol Bank. So please select HP Petrol Bank in the list of ledgers. So type the amount as 10,000. Once you type the amount, press enter. Right. So since we had chosen on account when we were recording the purchase voucher, so even when we are passing the payment voucher, we have to choose the same as on account. Center, enter, and come back to the screen. So credit, I will leave it to you. Whether if you want to, you can take cash or bank. Now I would go for uh, HCFC bank. Now in case if I am paying him by a check, okay, fine, we didn't as check. Or in case I am paying to any other mode. 
you can select whichever either ATM or card or check does the fund transfer or others. Okay, so I will select ATM. No check number. So being payment made towards the purchase of petrol. So payment made towards the purchase of petrol. If you want, you can add to, a, to HP petrol. Okay. So once you pass the payment voucher, press enter and close the entry. Please pass the payment voucher in case you haven't done. And then we'll go to the second purchase voucher. Yes, so this is how we pass the first payment voucher. So second payment voucher we have here. Yes. Purchase 100 units of Dell computers at 10,000 per unit from Sriram Traders, Karnataka at 18% GST. So, so company has purchased 100 pieces of Dell at 10,000 per piece from Sri Ram Traders. Now the location of the supplier, now first of all, who's the supplier here? Sundry Creditor here, it is Sri Ram Traders, right? So Sri Ram Traders is, is located where? It is in Karnataka, in some place. My company is situated in Karnataka, so it is intrastate inward supply. So let's pass the same voucher in tally as well. So please go back to the purchase voucher. Okay. So now, as I told, you can give supplier number, uh, supply invoice number as 002. Okay. As in ways you don't carry the bill here. Or if I want, I will show you in case, like what is the invoice number of it all we have to enter, right? So this is how we'll put up here. Right, so here if you observe, you have the, yes. So here if you observe, you have the date of the bill, you have the invoice number, you have the customer ID, right? And the due date. So this invoice number we have to put up in the supplier invoice number, the bill details, okay? Bill to the invoice consignee details and all consignee details. Everything will be reflected here. So just shown you a small sample of the same, but as of now, you can just give it as 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, Party, of course, we are purchasing from Sri Ram Traders. To create picture as Sri Ram Traders. Sundry Creditors. Same bill by bill, yes. Nothing else. Now here, if you if you want, you can give the uh, GST details, okay. And one more thing, you can give here. Uh, we will also see the invoice generation. All of us will will go for it. So what you can give is registration tag. You can give it as regular. You can also update the GST in number of Shiram traders, okay.
set or alter GH details, give it as yes. Press enter, no changes in this screen. Enter, enter. Accept, yes. Now here, if we resume to these received details, So here, now I'll, sh uh, I'll show you a sample of the GRN here, okay? So how the details have to be entered? So the received details is nothing but your GRN, who's received no details. Yes, so this is how it appears, the goose received note. Yes, this is the ideal one I can show. Yes, I hope all of you have, have observed this. Now this is the goose received note, so whenever when I'm purchasing any commodity, right, uh, for my business, I also receive this GRN. GRN stands for Goods Received Note, okay? So, which is a document uh, evidencing the receipt of the goods from the supplier. So what you can do is, if you observe here, you have the GRN number, the supplier, order number, delivery location, date, advice note, cost center, and all that. Okay, now, if you can observe here at the bottom, we have goods, pack size, price, order quantity, delivered quantity, and we have. Now, here's the description of the goods, the size of the goods, what price, what is the quantity that was ordered from the supplier, what I have received it. And this is nothing, this is how the GRN detail appears. Now, what Tally is asking you here is the same GRN details only. The receipt note number, if you see here, this is a GR number which has to be entered. Next, you have your received document number, dispatch through destination, who's the transporter. So as of now, you can just enter as 01 for receipt note number, press enter. Then you have document number, you can give it as probably SRN001. Dispatch through. Now, when I'm purchasing Dell computers from Shiram traders, how are they being dispatched? Okay. So I'll here I'll give it as tempo one. Anyway, uh, no, the mode, uh, the transportation, how it is done. Now, destination, where is the place of supply? Here I'll give it as Bangor. Carrier name or the agent. Now, who is the transporter? What is the name of the transporter? His details have to be given here. So here I'll give it as Kumar as a carrier name or the agent name. Now, what is this bill of lading? LRR. LR stands for the lorry receipt. In case the goods are being transported to the lorry, 
the lorry uh, receipt rr railway receipt bill of lading is by cargo or by shipment so like this depending upon the mode of transport the relevant document number relevant document details have to be uploaded in the receipt details so as of now we're taking by road that will buy a tempo van and we're not we're here not opting for the lorry in case you have to give the lr so you can just press enter and you can give the motor vehicle number the van's number so here i'll give it as you give uh, any way uh, the vehicle number sample vehicle number okay press enter right now here please give the address details for shri ram traders Okay. Karnataka, India. Yeah. Now here, select purchase account. Once you select purchase account, then press enter. The tax classification details will be automatically highlighted. So here, press this phase one. Well. So that time, what I had discussed, I had discussed that in case if it is intrastate purchase. What classification would you choose? Purchase taxable. If it is interstate, it is interstate purchase taxable. So now, since Sri Ram Traders are situated within the state of Karnataka, my place of business is also within the state of Karnataka. It is purchase taxable. So please choose purchase taxable. So once you choose purchase taxable as the tax classification, no, in the name. Not showing for what what is not being displayed tax classification screen yes ma'am is it tax classification screen or what is the issue tax classification so what you have to do is press f12 configuration from the purchase voucher now make sure show more configurations and show all configurations at the top left hand side of your screen both are yes show more configurations and show all if one of them is no please make it as yes so once you're done with that uh, if you observe you have the gst details at the right hand side right the bottom so yes, details and there you have modified tax rate details of gst so there will be no in case make it as yes this is feature okay. being displayed. make it as yes okay there will be no other. so once you're done press enter now you go back to the purchase account ledger by pressing the backspace press enter again it will definitely appear okay so i hope it's appearing in your screen tax classification details now okay so Right, so now here, what has been purchased? Now, so once you come to the name of the item, in the list of stock items, you have uh, the stock items which have been created, right? So here we will choose Dell computers. Now Dell computers, now you can choose any location, location one, two or three. Now quantity. Now, quantity, how much has been purchased by the company? The company is purchasing 100 units of Dell computers at 10,000 per unit from Sheena Traders. So, 100 at 10,000. Let's update the same here. Once you type the quantity as 100, press enter. Please type the amount as 10,000. So unit of measure will be automatically displayed as we saw in the petrol uh, purchase. 
it will automatically appear as returns because at the time of stock creation, stock item creation only, we had given the units of measure. In case you have not given units of measure, item allocation screen will not appear. Even though if it appears, it will not allow you to give the quantity details. It will only go to the amount one. Okay. So make sure units of measure all of you have given. Now press enter and you'll come back to the purchase voucher screen. So you'll get a gross amount of 10 lakhs. Okay, the total amount to be paid to Sri Ram traders for 100 uh, pieces or 100 numbers of Dell computers. Now press enter once. Just press enter once. Now you get a total line over there. Now, no pressing spacebar. Now, what you have to do is again press enter. Now, all of you would be here, right? Press enter once, press enter. Now, once you press two enters, that line will vanish, the total line will vanish. Okay, make sure it is uh, disappeared. Now, what you have to do is press the spacebar. So once you press the space bar, now here you have to levy the CGST and the SGST. Yeah. So what you have to do is in the list of ledgers at the top, you have the create option. So select create option and create a ledger as CGST, Central Goods and Services Tax. CGST. You are not going to put any account there since it is a statutory ledger. Type CGST. Press enter. Now, under which group will I create a CGST ledger? What would be your answer? Yes. Duties and tax. Very good. It is duties and taxes. So I will select the group of duties and taxes. Type of duty or tax, it is GST. So select GST there. Now, central uh, tax type will be central tax because it is central goods and services tax. Now, make sure the cost centers applicable are no. We are not going to activate the cost centers for this ledger and percentage of calculation let it be zero percent because we are because since separate gst rates are applicable we don't have the same rate applicable for all the commodities right now one is taxable at 12 percent the other at 18 percent the other at three percent so that so the rate varies henceforth we cannot give the percentage of calculation over here in case if we are dealing with only one commodity like only dell computers only printers uh, you know, or uh, the commodities which have the common GST rate. In such case, here only we can give the percentage of calculation. That can be done. But as of now, we're not giving it since we are dealing with variance of GST rate based commodities. Right? So press enter, enter. Rounding method, it will be not applicable as of now. Now here, I hope all of you have got 90,000 as CGST. So how we have got 90,000 here? While we're creating the stock item for Dell computers, we had given a tax rate, GST rate of 18%, yes? So 18% is a total tax, where 9% is CGST and 9% is SGST. So now we're, now we're seeing 50% of the tax that's 90. Now press enter only once. Now here you have to give the tax details of SGST. So what you have to do is press the space bar. So in the list of ledgers, you have the create option. So select the create option. Now again, you have to create a ledger as SGST. Okay. So, so uh, type SGST in the name. 
Now again, as CGST, SGST will will fall will also fall under the group of duties and taxes. So type of duty will be GST. Tax type is state tax. Please select state tax as tax type. Now cost centers are applicable. No percentage of calculation. Ignore it. It will be zero only. As I've given you the reason already. Rounding method it is not applicable. Accept yes. Yeah. So here we have CGST ninety and SGST ninety thousand. Hope all of you have got a tax of one lakh eighty thousand totally, right? So ten lakh into eighty eighteen percent is eighty thousand of cheese. Mom, mom, for me it's not showing ninety thousand. So what is the amount it is displaying? Nothing is displaying, mom. Nothing is displaying. It's empty. So probably. Uh, when you are creating the Dell computers as a stock item, please cross check now by going to Alt G. In case the ones who are not able to get the tax, right? So first job you have to do is press Alt G, go to the Alter Master, select the stock item, select Dell computers. Now here, if you press Enter. Come to the GST applicable uh, details. Your GST applicable applicable. Set or alter it has to be yes, and make sure your tax rate here is not empty. It is 18% IGST, 9% 9% CGST SGST, and a question is asked over there: Is non-GST goods in case by mistake you have made it as yes? Please make it as no. Non GST has to be no, otherwise also tax will not be displayed. Calculation type on value and taxable. These details have to be there. So first cross check with the stock item. Okay, once you're done. This okay. Once you're done with this, then you can also check the. Uh, GST activation details for the company. How? By which key? We can also use F11 features. So if you press F11 from purchase voucher creation screen only, you can select enable GST and there make sure that this feature is activated. Okay. So make sure this one is activated. Uh, once you make sure it is done, press Control A or press Enter and come back to the main screen. So if these two are successfully done, the tax area should automatically appear. Okay. So now what we have to do is now in the total column it is showing as more than fifty thousand, and then at the right left hand side at the bottom we have. Provide GST or eBay bill details. Now, what does eBay bill mean? Okay, eBay bill is a document which is required to be presented, issued when the value of the consignment is fifty thousand or more. Up to fifty, eBay bill is not required. If it is more than that, eBay bill is required to be. Presented or issued. Okay, so in this case, since the total value of the consignment is eleven lakh eighty thousand, so it is crossing fifty. That's why tally is asking you the eBay bill details. If it is less than fifty, tally will not have this uh, feature highlighted here. So when the value of the consignment is more than fifty, eBay bill is required to be presented. Now. This eBay bill contains the details of the goods dispatched, details of the transporter, his ID, a complete detail. So we, if we can, we can just uh, check the, you know, sm small eBay bill format, how it may appear. Okay.
Right, so this is how it appears. We have an email bill here. Yes, so if it's visible, yes, it could be visible in your screen. Now here we have the eBay bill, a small document, where we have here two parts. One we have is this part A and part B. Okay, so part A uh, contains the details of the consignment, okay, right? As well as the GST number of the supplier. Now here if you can watch, the eBay bill number will be there. eBay bill date at what time it is issued and uh, on which date eBay bill has been issued generated by which company and up to what time it is valid that's also displayed so valid from and valid until so for one day for home so what is the duration 24 hours so more than that also it can be extended so this is how the EAP details are displayed now at the bottom if you see in part a you have the gst in number of the supplier right what i've given you 29 followed by the pan number of the supplier or the entity and then we have the last three digits then here we have place of dispatch now from where the consignment is moving from the where is the location of the supplier and it is a place of supply so suppose if i take my company it is situated in bangalore so it come as bangalore urban Karnataka. now gst in of the recipe now i am the receiver of the goods so my gst number will also be displayed provided i am also registered uh, person registered trader under GST. Place of delivery. So, how is the place of dispatch? Now, here it is place of dispatch is Bangalore and delivery is Mangalore. So, from Mangalore to ba uh, uh, Bangalore to Bangalore, it is going on. In case if it is within Bangalore, also both will be Bangalore and document number will be there, date of issue of the document, and what is the total value of the goods, the HSN code of the goods. Right, so I've, uh, I've shown you various examples for Hedison code, right? Hedison code of the goods will be displayed here. And what is the reason for transportation? Is it meant for sale or a stock transfer? So what is the cost or the reason for transportation? And who is the transporter here? This transporter's details will be given. And how is how in part B, how it is transported more by road from Bangalore to uh, Mangalore? and the, the timings, everything will be given here. So this is a sample available format. Now the same, what happens is even in Tally also, we have to update these available details even in Tally software also. Okay, so in case if we give it as yes, can you see here the same one? So here you have the available number, document number. So in case if we give as 01, can you observe up here? There is a small error. The eBay bill number should contain 12 digits without any alphabets or special characters, yes? So it's very particular of how the eBay bill has to appear, right? So now this is the way. So what happens is if we give the eBay bill number date and if you observe at the bottom, yes, so dispatch from. So dispatch from, of course, from where? So in the, in the, Search, we saw that, right? From Bangalore to Bangalore, it is being dispatched. So dispatch from where? In case if it is getting dispatched from one city and is getting delivered to another city, that details you, you can give here. In case if it is cargo or shipment, the same way from where to where. And how many kilometers in travel, okay? Distance traveled has to be given here. And what is the name of the transporter? In case if it is new, please select it as new. If you press enter, you can give them this details, which transport, like your transporters, Vara transporters, and the transporters ID. Okay, so like this, the format has to be entered in the email. So here you can give it as no as of now and press enter. Now here, level lakh eighty is the total bill amount which has to be uh, paid to Sriram traders. Assuming that Shiram Traders is given a credit period of 30 days, okay, we can opt for a new reference bill. Select new reference and name you can give it as Shiram Traders. Or in case if any authorized person, you know, who can, uh, I mean, in, in whose name, right, uh, I receive the bill. 
from Sri Ram Traders. That name I can give it up here in my tally uh, books. Otherwise, it is Sri Ram Traders. As it will do, 30 days can be taken. Enter, enter. Yes. So narration is B. Dell Computers purchased on credit. This is how we have to give the narration being Dell Computers purchased on credit. Please pass the uh, entry for purchase of Dell Computers from Shira. I hope it is clear till here. We will fill up yes. okay. Okay. once we would do it. But as of now, uh, you can just ignore that part and pass the entry. Later when it is required, we will do for we will go for that. Okay, so once you tap the narration, press enter, accept the voucher. Now we have passed the purchase voucher for the purchase of Dell computers. Now 11 lakh 80 thousand is yet to be paid to Sri Ram traders. Now what, now, what can be done is all of you would have had an idea of how the invoice appears. Now, all of you would have booked any commodity, booked any dress, a particular product, whether it is online or you're going to any shop you're purchasing. But most probably, if I go for the online, like if you take your Snapdeal, Flipkart, Amazon, I hope all of you remember how the format of the bill appears, which they would have attached to your uh, right commodity or the product which you would have uh, booked online, placed an order online. Now, how that particular invoice is generated? Let's find out. What we can do is we can press Alt G. All of you press Alt G, the go to option. Now select Daybook. In the common reports, select Daybook. Press Enter. Now you get your Daybook where all your vouchers are appearing contra, payment, receipt, journal, and now two purchase vouchers. Yes. So now what you will do is you will select Sriram Traders voucher. Okay. Press Enter on the entry. Now you're again reopening the purchase voucher of Sri Ram Traders. Okay. Now, here, what you have to do is press Control P. Control P. You get this option print. Okay. Now, here, Select the option preview. I for preview and press enter. Or you can also go for the print option. Right? And one more here. You have the configuration list. Okay? Now you have simple invoice format. You have check prepared by. Now in case if a trader wants to design or uh, uh, you know uh, add the necessary features in his invoice, he can design his own invoice, right? He can design his bill. So what features he wants to add, what features he doesn't want to be present in the invoice, all of it can be done. How? I will show it to you again. From the purchase voucher, press Control P. So you get the print option here. And here you can go to configure, right? So here, whichever option needs to be activated, you can just press enter on that. Suppose like I want to give a show prepared by, and if I press enter, it'll automatically take it as yes. So already the GST details are activated here. Show rate of duty for stock items, yes. Item wise, GST details as yes. GST rate in percentage, if you require, it might show. But as of now, we have not chosen the same.
Okay, like this, we can activate uh, the features or what requirement we have in the invoice. Yes, so here can you observe? If, if you, you can also uh, set the printer details, now not to your laptop or to your desktop, you have the printers, right, uh, linked. So printer details also can be given here. Okay. So once you give this, however you want your invoice to be generated, it will be available here. So once you're done, I think uh, just check out this. So we, yeah, I will show you the print, I mean the sample copy of the invoice. But as of now, I've shown you how to configure them, right? What features you want to get activated, which we will see soon. Uh, the invoice, how how it can be generated. So once you're done with this, now let's assume a situation where payment has to be made to Shiram traders. Now, what's the total amount to be paid to Shiram traders? It is 11,80,000 inclusive of GST. Now, suppose in case if I make the payment partially or some down payment or some initial payment, now I have to use which voucher here? I have to go for a payment voucher. Now, what we will do is we will press F5 payment voucher. Okay. Now, all of us are the payment voucher. Now, in the debit aspect, we select the party name as Sriram Traders. So, select Sriram Traders. Now the total amount to be paid is 11,80. But actually, uh, I am paying only 80,000 to Sriram traders as of now. Remaining 11 lakhs are yet to be paid. So type of reference will be against reference for the amount of 80,000. So you can just press enter. So totally how much is spending? 11,80, but only 80 is being paid. So press enter. Enter. Now here, can you observe at the top, under Sriram Traders, the current balance is being displayed as 11 lakh. So 80,000 is paid as of now, still 11 lakh is pending, which is under new reference only. So credit, it is the cash on bank, which you have to select. Right. So like this, partial payment also can be shown in the tally with the payment vouchers, where only part amount is being paid or some initial amount is being paid. So check if we are issuing to Sriram traders, the check details can be given. So we initial or you also give it as a down payment made to Sriram traders towards the purchase of 10 computers. Like this. So it can be done. So, like this, still 11 lakh is yet to be paid to Sriram. Some initial payment or some down payment or some advance in that nature also can be taken. In case if it is there, some payment has to be done because on short, uh, in case if a supplier doesn't accept, he will not give a credit period of completely 30 days for the payment of the whole amount. He, he will ask for some uh, portion of the amount to be paid. In such a case, how to operate it? I've shown you here where you can go for the payment voucher and you can pass the necessary entry. So once you type the narration, you can pass the entry for payment. Now, if you go back and check on the go to option, right? So here, you have bills payable 
And here you have Shriram traders as 11 lakh, still amount to be paid. Okay. So like this, paid is 80 and the remaining is 11. Okay. So please uh, pass the entry for payment voucher in case you haven't done. So like this, we have passed the initial two entries for petrol and Dell computers purchase. So the next session, we will go for the purchase of Elegy books and Agile pens. Now here we have a special application of discount, a 3% discount, where we're going to implement for Swati Enterprises. And then we'll begin this future. If you have any doubts, let me know. Or anything you're, you're not able to get, please make sure it's clear for you. So all of you have passed the entries, the first two? Yes, ma'am. So we will pass on the third entry in the next session. Until then, keep your practice intact and we'll resume the vouchers, these purchase vouchers in the next class. So have a nice day. Thank you.